Hello and welcome to Geek to Movies on our very special episode of Shannon's House. Hey, <laughs> it's me. It's been a while since we've been here. It has been a while. We've been doing a lot of car reviews, but we're yeah, back. I still think Corvette is the best car made. That was my review for cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I for one like. The Ghostbusters car. I think that was one of the best cars That's, made. Right next not, to the DeLorean wrong. and... Oh, don't, don't you dare. <gasps> no. Don't you dare compare the, that to the DeLorean. It can time I'm, travel. No. It no, can no, 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 no. Travel. You're not listening to what I'm saying. The Ghostbusters vehicle is not as good as the DeLorean. The DeLorean oh, is oh, here. Okay, yeah. yeah. Then it's say, the it's 80s it's Michael Keaton Batmobile. Yes. Yeah. And then all the way down here is Ghostbusters. It's here. It's no, right it's there. here. <laughs> Fast and Furious goes here from the 90s before before the Ghostbusters funeral home car. My DeLorean is the greatest. Movie. Yeah, I mean like you really it's the it's like for it's me iconic. it's like Michael Keaton's Batmobile from the 1989 Batman movie and yeah. the DeLorean. This is the level we're at where either uh, depending on how I'm feeling, DeLorean or Batmobile from the 80s. That's that's my view. The Ghostbusters car is up there. No, it's up there. It's really yeah, nice. no, it's a great car. Bill Murray's up there. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, he drives the, the car. Yeah, I love the sound. The, the thing that I love about the 80s Ghostbusters is when they turn on the on. the machine that does the... You know, like, whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. That sound is better than the car. That I could live yeah. on that sound. I love that sound. I did not understand sound. that. That sound is just amazing to me. That sound effect. I can't... Droom, and it just goes. And they said it the in the end. The electrical humming. Yeah, yeah, like, it's beautiful. Like, if, if that was a soundtrack, I'd just listen to it just turning on and off. I just wish electricity sounded that good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true. And I'm so happy that they actually kept that sound in this movie from the original 80s and the effects. Yeah. Even like the effects from the '80s Ghostbusters. Anyways, we're already jumping way too far. I did. Ahead. I did see Grace Randolph's review. She said she cried in this movie at the sound effect of that thing that you're just talking about. Yes. She turns on the backpack. It's weird. I always I agree like, with Grace. Uh, sound really? Like yes. that was not what I was expecting. Watch any review and then watch mine of any movie. We always yeah. You guys agree, agree on without even talk. Like I don't even know her. That's all, right. all right, so. We are here to do Ghostbusters. Now, I am your host today because, well, I just don't know enough about these kids and what this really movie, I, I just, I don't, I don't. I can talk about Dune all day or Eternals or Marvel, but I can't really have much to say on this movie. So I'm going to throw it over to our good friend Shannon. But before we do that, like and subscribe our channel. We have tons of reviews. If you're on our YouTube channel right now or at geektomovies.com, however you found it. There's a link below, and if you know if you want to see more reviews, we try to update and do a review. We try to do a review as much as we can, like once a week. Sometimes we slow down because life happens. But other than that, we try to make sure we have one major review up once a week. Um, and for all those returning, thanks for subscribing, and welcome to our Ghostbusters review. The only thing we can guarantee is our opinions. That's all, that's all we got here. So before we more get into that, we saw Ghostbusters. I got to see it with George. Did you see it yesterday? Yes, I did. Who'd you uh, see it with? Last, uh, my boyfriend, Rob. Where'd you guys go? Uh, we went to AMC in Madison Heights. Ooh, was it nice? Yeah, it's not bad. We've been there before. It's on John R. and 15. Oh, we saw Sonic there. Yeah, yeah. And um, Hollywood. Uh, 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 Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. The, I, okay, so I know what you're talking about. But that's cool. Did mm -hmm. Rob like it? Not, not yeah, he loved it, yeah. Really? It was great. I was like, why aren't you taking Rob? Because is he a f just... Sorry, before we get into her, is Rob a fan of the original Ghostbusters? He has seen it. I don't know if he's a fan, but... But he, but he knew Ghostbusters. He knew Ghostbusters, yeah. Have you seen the original? Yeah, yeah. of course. I love Ghostbusters. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Just so, curious. So, he knew about the Marshmallow Man? Yeah, he knew about the Marshmallow that's Man. Such a, okay, that's spoilers, but that's... That's not spoilers. Movie. It was in the trailer I saw it. No, that's in the old 80s movies. No, I saw it in the trailer, too. Oh, really? Yeah, it was in the trailer. Okay. Maybe you're right. Well, anyways, me and George got to see it. You got to see it. We got to see it all in theaters. And uh, I really don't have much to say, except the one triggering thing I'll say is I love this more than the original. You might hate me for it, but I don't care. I agree with I, you. I, I, I think I laughed more here than I did the original Ghostbusters. I thought these kids were magic. Even the kid from Stranger Things, what's his name? Finn Wolfhart. Finn Wolfhart. Like, he doesn't have a lot, but 
The scenes that he was in was fine. I love the chemistry between the mom and Paul Rudd's character. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing at. So good. So good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to have you go last because you're going to be a long review, I feel like. I'll throw it over George first, if that's okay. Because you can close this off. Go ahead, George. Okay. Um, this movie was phenomenal. I, I was not expecting it to be above and beyond. Like, this was... This, this blew everything I... All my expectations out of the water. I, I granted they weren't that high originally. <laughs> Except that I knew Paul Rudd was in it, so I, I knew to set him at some pace. Sexiest man in the world. <laughs> there and we go. 55 years old somehow. I, I, it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Because, yeah, he looks so young. Yeah. It's not a shock that Paul Rudd looks good as he does. Anyways, Anyways keep going. It's so not that this is about Paul he Rudd. Was, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, a lot of it was... His acting was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, once again, just like in Ant Man, he is hilarious. He's absolutely hilarious, and I really that's that's my favorite style of character for him. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, his acting was phenomenal. Um, there, I, I would have to say, I I wasn't a huge fan of like the plot. Like, the, the plot itself wasn't absolutely amazing or anything. But it didn't need to be. It didn't need to be yeah. because this was this was basically, you know, just like uh, essentially a connection to the old movies. Yeah. So this, they did an absolutely phenomenal job of of connecting it to the old movies, first off. And, and second off, like, updating the effects to be what they should be nowadays, but still like the old movies. If that makes sense. Yes, it does. Um, 100%. It was just absolutely phenomenal. I don't remember... I do remember that it seemed a little strange. The music was kind of loud at certain points throughout the movie. That's because we were in Dolby. Oh. Okay, well that explains it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you like Dolby. Right? I do it's, like I do like or, Dolby. The lady... Not the, in Dolby. I didn't have that problem. Yeah, I'm okay. sure. The lady... This girl in front of us. I remember this. She went out of the theater like this. Because oh. it was so loud. Wow. And I was like, this is... Even for Dolby, this is a little too... It did seem a little loud for Dolby. Yeah. I, I'm glad I saw it again. It was loud in IMAX, too. So I think it's just the sound design. So me and Stephanie... Okay. I saw it twice now. I, I saw it last night with Stephanie, and we got the chance to see it in IMAX. It was still really loud in IMAX. So okay. I think that's done on purpose, maybe. So extra loud becomes even louder in Dolby. IMAX, it was just regular loud, but still loud. Yeah. All in all, it was it was a really good movie. I mean, I was almost in tears at the end of it. It's yeah. There, there are some really moving moments. I was not ready for emotional. I was not tears, ready for that either. Ghostbusters. And I, uh, I, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I was like, really in Ghostbusters? Yeah. Why? Why you have to turn on the feels here? Yeah. It's so good though. It is. So it amazing. is really amazing. It's like the they really did a good job with the you servicing the fans of the original, and then also making it its own new thing. Yes. Ooh, you know what? We're going to jump to Do you have anything else to add? That's about it. What's I your, would say go, go watch see it? it. Go yep. see it in theaters. Yep. All right. Um, Shannon, you were already talking, so might as well throw it over to well, you. Well, I had about five little kids sitting in the right in front of me, like seven, eight-year-old kids, right? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And they were, you know, talking and everything and during the previews, and then they were focused on the screen during the rest of it. So as I was watching this, I was thinking, you know, this is like, Maybe these kids' first intro to Ghostbusters, or maybe they just watched... I'm sure they grew up with it. It's a pretty classic movie that parents know. Nah. Uh, they were only seven or eight years old, so I don't yeah. know. I, mean, I saw Ghostbusters watching... when I was five or six. Yeah, but, yeah, but it's, not, it's not like a big oh, sorry. movie nowadays. In the That's 80s, true. It's not... Yeah, so, um, like, I don't think Gen Z really grew up with Ghostbusters. They probably may have seen it in passing, but it wasn't, like, their movie. Like, it wasn't, like, their big thing that I like, we all grew up it. loving it. Yeah, oh, yeah, and you're only a few years younger than me, so like yeah. 13, 14 year olds that are going to go see this movie, this is their Ghostbusters. So uh, the whole time I was watching it with that perspective in mind, and I think the little kids really liked it. The, Were they laughing? I think so, yeah. I, I Their dad kind of fell asleep. <laughs> their Makes dad sense. was snoring in the chair in front of me. I almost wanted to kick his chair, but um, <laughs> the kids liked it. And I think they did such a good job with, A, the, the casting... Um, the ca Grace McKenna. I've been following her career ever since she was uh, in. Okay, Antonia. so who's Grace McKenna in the movie? Grace McKenna plays um, um, Phoebe, the little girl. 
and they she doesn't even look recognizable in this because they cut her hair and they give her glasses and they she looks a lot hair. like her grandfather from the original yeah they really made her look a lot like that like that guy and uh spangler and um she was in i Tanya. she played i Tanya when she was young so that's one of my favorite movies finn wolfhart from stranger things uh he didn't do as much for me here as he did in stranger things when he was a little younger but he played his role perfectly perfectly fine and um, he didn't do a bad job no he didn't, he didn't do a bad job he wasn't stealing the scenes like the little girl was but you know, and i always whenever there's a teenager in movies i always expect them to have a bad attitude to sneak out of the house to disrespect their parents i mean and that they, kind of happens. it's just played out and um most of the teenagers i knew like as kids were not like that at all so what that, no, I didn't. All the teenagers I knew as kids were like that. Not my, not my friends. <laughs> not in homeschool world. Not in homeschool world. No, I was yeah. homeschool. Not in homeschool. And school. I knew a lot. Like that. <laughs> oh, you were homeschool, but yeah. Um, no, that not in my world. So I, whenever I see a teenager on screen, I'm just like, please don't do that. And they didn't do that here. He had a little bit of that, like I he didn't want to be did here. But she was the the troublemaker. She was more of the troublemaker. Yeah, that's true. She um, yeah, she's the one that kind of is more the troublemaker here. And I liked that the siblings had stuff to do together, and then they also kind of did their own thing. It was very uh, realistic sibling life to me, because I have five siblings. Hmm. No, um, that makes sense. So, what's your recommendation? Oh, um, yeah, go see this one. Take your kids to go see it. This will get your kids to want to go watch the original Ghostbusters, for sure. That's true. Um, I didn't think about it. I also that. wanted to say that I really liked... they. Ha Grace McKenna, like, does so much with the the blaster and the ghosts and the guns and everything that um, the two boys kind of take a not they don't take a back seat like they're not shoved in the corner or anything. But, I disagree with one thing, but I'll what? do my quick review for that. Okay, yeah, they like they um they have a lot to do, but this is really Phoebe's movie and she gets to take action and do all the fun stuff. For sure. Um, so the one thing I disagree with is it's not just her. There's another kid in this movie called Podcast. Why do people call you Podcast? Oh, I call myself Podcast because of my podcast. That is just... Podcast was hilarious. He is, in my opinion, as much as a lead as this girl. Oh, they yeah. have majority of the scenes together. Now, Paul Rudd also is really funny and has great chemistry with the mom. The teenage love story could have just been completely taken out. You that... could have taken the teenage girl out of this and nothing would have changed. Right. Like, I, I think it was just there to... Add diversity. Or... Add a love story plot. I think to yeah, add the love the story, movie. yeah. They wanted it's... to set her up for the next movie. Yeah. You know what they did, though? That they had, the, they had to have one black girl so that there was four Ghostbusters and one black one. They had to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with it, but... She didn't get. She was not given much to do. No, I mean, again, the she black guy. Nothing in this I, movie. I mean, I hate to say it, but the black guy in the original Ghostbusters didn't really have much to do. He was just kind of showed up at the end and was a Ghostbuster. Well, so, um, and it just kind of fits that formula here too. Just. No. Oh, I was gonna say this is the good female Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so yeah, how okay all right. all right i have a question about that yeah. uh, but let me let me get through my review real quick now this kid podcast i don't know this kid's name the real in real life but his on-screen chemistry with this girl and his jokes Fantastic. both of them just like really were riffing off one another in a great comedic good both had good timing both were yeah just way mature beyond their years for their acting that they did yeah and i i love that line it's not spoiler so i'll just say it but there's a there's a line where it says like all right you don't have to say yes it might be moving too fast but do you want to be my lab partner and she's like yeah yeah <laughs> and it's like but i don't think we're going to be doing any labs <laughs> i just <laughs> thought that line was so great and all of his little like intros to his own podcast where he's walking with the mic and then there was another scene where, like, she's pointing the gun, and he's pointing the mic. <laughs> no, it's hilarious. It's just so great. And him driving, there's, like, a little RV thing that he's driving, like, this remote RV, control yeah. trap for the ghost, and he has it hooked up to, like, this, like, yeah, what is it called? RC car. RC car. It's so great. He's, it just, it just works. Uh, there's this great, like, ghost chase scene where they're chasing Slimer. 
through the town. That scene just played out was brilliant. Like, there's a lot of communication that needed to happen between her in the gunner seat, him with the RV roll co coaster thing, and then their older brother driving the Ghostbusters car. It was just magic. Like, there's just some scenes that just, you're like, this is working on every level. And for me, great action, great, like, comedic timing between the three, and both, all three communicating well enough to, like, know what they're trying to accomplish here without it being corny or draggy or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And that consistency stayed and played out the entire movie, um, just how they investigated and how they... Even the girl, like you said, like she's not she's a love interest, but when she was there, she was adding to the overall story and situation that they were trying to solve or accomplish. True. Um, it's it's a really well done movie, and then I also just like to add, I don't know the mom. I don't, I've never seen the mom in any other movie or TV show. Have you guys? No, no. I didn't think she was very likable in this movie. But there is a scene where she references, like, I don't know how to connect to my daughter. I've been trying for a very long mm -hmm. time. But I, I feel like she's missing, like, the, you know, like, my I can connect with the son, but I can't connect with the daughter. No, she, she, was, said that, she was talking about the dad. She was no, 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 she dad. was talking about herself. No, she was talking no, no, about no. the dad. She was talking about herself, she too. Was. Yes. She was. I remember she said to Paul Rudd's character, but she says, I don't get her, and I don't know how to talk to her yeah because every time she tried to talk about her science stuff her mom was like ew boring i don't want to hear about that and so I'm she also has the mom for that she also has the she also has the trauma of their dad doing that to her and she hated that side of her dad remember yeah. true the okay. whole science thing and, and that was one of the reasons why she didn't like science yeah until gotcha. paul okay. rudd was trying to reintroduce her to it Right. Okay. And she was like, science is great. Like, your daughter's doing, she could be doing a lot of things, but the one thing she's not messing up on is, like, she's really good at being somebody who can problem solve and do all these amazing things with science that most kids are not into. It's like, she's like, yeah, but, like, she has the trauma with her dad and she just doesn't get it. She's like, okay, but science is stupid. I don't know how to talk to my daughter about this. I'd rather have her pick a dress and talk about boys and play with unicorns and dolls, right? So, mm. And she was not even remotely, even a little bit like that. She had zero interest in any of that. So for her, she was just like, I don't know what to do with you. And I think that's, okay, now we're going to go to spoilers. Go see it. That's my review. Oh, wait, no, before we that, what, have you guys seen the female Ghostbusters movie that came out? Yes. How no, bad is it? It's bad. It's, it's really bad. bad. Is it everything they said it was? It is like the bridesmaids cult. with ghosts. I like bridesmaids. I do like bridesmaids, but this was <sighs> not. This was not good. It's like Melissa McCarthy making fat jokes, and well, that's every Melissa McCarthy. Movie. And somebody else <laughs> making poop jokes. Well, that's most. And conscious. then there's just it was the not. It was the not very one chick good. From SNL. Oh yeah, Kate, Kate McKinnon or something. Oh, Kate no, McKinnon. She, she does the yeah. Verizon ads now. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, it's like her making a bunch of dumb jokes and Melissa I, McCarthy making more dumb jokes. I do think Kate McKinnon is the best in the SNL alumni right now. Whenever I watch yeah. uh, SNL these she days, she was good back then. Keenan yeah. Thompson and Kate uh, Kate McKinnon are the best in the SNL skits. Is Pete Davidson still on there? Yeah, yeah. he just doesn't. He's not as good as he used to be. Oh, I don't know. He, I think he's slowly phasing out of SNL. It feels more I think like... I think it's because he started dating Kim Kardashian. <laughs> He's wait, wait, that's Kim Kardashian. He's dating how many times? <laughs> wait, wait, isn't Kim Kardashian with the Kanye West? No, no, they they got what? divorced. They're in the middle of a divorce. No, they're and not. And now, yeah. What? How have you guys not heard about I this? Know. I don't follow oh, Kim that's... Kardashian. I don't. You don't keep up with the no. Kardashians, oh, obviously. <laughs> I hate Kim and I. I'll okay, tell so, you right now. I hate the Kardashians. So yeah, they they were going through a divorce ever since the election, and oh, I have um, no idea. Yeah, Pete Davidson and Kim, Kim Kardashian. How long have they been dating of, for? It sounds like it's been maybe a few weeks. Months, okay, so it's new. Like that. No, yeah. it's new. I mean, that's Pete Davidson is always with the A list like movie. A list everybody. Yeah, like yeah. the hottest woman in the planet. Somehow yeah. Pete Davidson is there dating them. Uh, but yeah, yeah. What was I saying? Yeah. So the female Ghostbusters movie, both of you have seen it, and you would say no go, not even a little bit. No. It's that bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. Skip, 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 skip. 
Just stick to this. Yeah, watch original. this. I mean, this is the good Ghost There's Busters a few movie. funny things. I'd have to say probably some of the funniest parts are honestly like with. Let really, me guess, the really, really trailers. Probably. Yeah, and, you could probably and, just um, watch a compilation. Most of the really goofy, hilarious ones are just Chris Hemsworth. As the that's intern. what I was gonna say. My friend said that watch it for Chris Hemsworth. I, that's yeah, literally just about it. Yeah, I figured. Okay. Well, they anyway. Say, yeah, they have um, him playing a blonde. I didn't feel like the girl Ghostbusters so. movie respected the original. This is like a, an op, like a, a writing an opus to the original. It like yeah. loves and respects the original. It has the nostalgia feel that I felt when I watched Force Awakens. Like, do you remember berries? I call them the remember berries. Like Ghostbusters it has that sprinkle of memo berries from the eighties. When you watch it, like you know, Force <laughs> Awakens. Do you remember this scene with Han Solo and Chewbacca on them? Do you remember this scene with Luke? I feel like there was a lot of memo berries in this movie, and I think it was working for what it is. South Park created the term memo berries. Google it if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, they call. It, have you seen that episode of South Park? No. It's so great. Um, it's like uh, it's just like all these movies, like who reboots or whatever sequels after decades later. It's kind of like like Jurassic Park, like Jurassic mm-hmm. World did that, Force Awakens did that, now Ghostbusters does that. It's just a lot of, a lot of reference. Even the lines in this movie. Okay, spoilers. Three, two, one. Go see it now. Okay. Uh, the, the 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 scene at the end where where like the Paul Rudd and the mom become possessed. Yeah. That uh, was weird. But that was in the original. Yeah. That was Sigourney Weaver. And the guy from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Dad, oh, both yeah, like, right. and they both become possessed by the this being that's in the movie at the end. But they become dogs, and they and they try to. That. Are you the gatekeeper? I'm the key master. That's all referencing the original mm-hmm. Ghostbusters because I just saw it a few weeks ago because I forgot it, so I rewatched the first Ghostbusters. But the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Dad, and Sigourney Weaver's character, which was at the end of the credit scene. With Bill Murray trying to electrocute him with the car. Um, Sigourney Weaver and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids characters both become dogs, and they kind of ins- they like the bodyguards to the evil chick in this movie, who is like. Hmm. Uh, uh, so that's 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 literally play by play what happens, and um, Sigourney Weaver's character becomes super horny, like to a point that is like unrealistically horny, and then the mom in this movie becomes super horny. <laughs> he was looking for the mate to bring the basically the apocalypse in the original so these two beings get possessed they try to mate that was a podcast there no no she was doing that with paul rudd no no no. a podcast in the chair when she when they walk into the house with the kids and like she's sitting in the chair oh you're right you're right you're right okay Yep, yep. Right. I was, I was thinking. I, was I thought thinking it was the funny. Scene with Paul Rudd and her, where well, Paul that's... Rudd has a flower in his hair. Yes, yes. So Sigourney <laughs> Weaver first tries to basically, basically, she tries to force herself on Bill Murray's character, and Bill Murray in the original goes, "Yeah, I try not to um, sleep with when there's an exorcism that needs to take place or some really uh, funny uh, joke." It's like, I want you inside of me. And Bill Murray goes, I think there's already too many. There's already somebody inside of you. Because no, she's possessed by a demon. That's funny. So she's just, like, Sigourney Weaver's character has become super horny, super, like, whatever. And Bill Murray's just trying to, like, push her off. And, like, she kind of did that with podcasts, but they didn't take it as far as, obviously, with, like, Bill Murray's character. But enough to show, like, hey, this thing that's inside of the mom is the same spirit that was inside of Sigourney Weaver's characters in the original. And the dad from, have you ever seen Honey, I Shark the Kids? Mm-hmm. And he was big helmet in um, Spaceballs. Yeah, the, um, from that really famous musical with the plant that eats people. Sure. Uh, I don't know what you're referencing, but I'll take your word for it. I have no idea what that what you just said. But uh, is it a famous 80s movie? Suddenly Seymour. I... Uh, yeah, really famous movie. He the, the giant plant and it eats people. Don't feed the plant. Oh, I never saw 60s it. 60s music. Yeah, yeah, that looked like garbage. I never saw it. But I, I do know what you're referencing now. I don't even remember the name of the movie. I do know what you're talking about. So it is an old movie. But anyways, like, they eventually meet, and they eventually basically have sex, like Paul Rudd and she did, um, and they try to bring upon, like, 
whatever this demonic thing wants, which is to bring the end of the world, but of course... What a weird plot for a kid's movie, but okay. It's not a kid's movie, it's the it's original. Not, yeah. That's what oh, happened the in the original. original. But that happens in this one, too. Well, they have to, because they're throwing mama berries. It's all about yeah, throwing yeah, back. Yeah. Remember this from the first movie? Do you remember the Marshmallow Man? Now they're tiny and trying to cook each other and make <laughs> s'mores. That with was the great. I know it was. Oh my goodness, that was so good. Yeah, like, that actually happened in the the little Marshmallow Man. There's a giant Marshmallow right, Man Right, I remember the giant one yeah and then the scene where like paul rudd is walking through walmart and then he runs into the dog and then he runs away honey i shrunk the kids uh father before he got turned like paul rudd's character actually does the same thing he sees the dog and he tries to run away in the and he goes he runs to central park from his apartment because the dog's chasing him from his apartment because it shows up in zikoni weaver's apartment and, and he runs out, and the dog eventually chases him down and possesses him, just like in the original. And then Paul Rudd and the mom mate as demons, just like the original. Hmm. And then, like, they basically have to kill the woman who comes as the main bad guy with the, like, gate opening. Um, and they have to send her back to basically hell or her dementia. I don't know where she's from, but some form of whatever. Like, basically, she's trying to bring the apocalypse is the original he she's a some this is actually real she's a sumerian god from the sumerian culture that's what they were referencing with all the artifacts in the cave or the mining stuff it all that's that's all real in the similar sumerian culture they were talking about that god in their culture from like egyptian time was going to do the same thing that's what it's referencing so all of that is just just everything is just exactly like the original movie in fact that's when the movie kind of loses me because there's nothing new. I already knew where the movie was going because they were just replaying the original movie at a certain point. I would say the first half is better because there's something new happening, but once the original plot line kicks in, it loses all original. Line. Like, I was just bored. Because, like, the only thing that was shocking... It did lose me a little bit once all the crazy ghost stuff started happening. But see, that stuff is great in the original like the because I've never seen it before. Right. Yeah, but so in the this... possession and this stuff, it wasn't... That was where it lost me. But it's only, like, 20 minutes of this movie, and the rest of it's all great. Yeah, Ghostbusters, the original, is mostly funny, because they're just trying to be Ghostbusters with ghosts. But then, you know, like, this apocalyptic, world-ending ghost thing happens, and then it kind of revs up to stop being... It's an entire plot line from the original that I did not... That, that just... I know why they did it, and if it wasn't for the original Ghostbusters coming at the end, like Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, um, I don't know the black actor's name. Oh, the why they broke up the whole company? No, 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 them just coming in. I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't mm. expecting Bill Murray and all of them to come at the end and do the... It you, is really cool that they got all four of them. In the original... Okay, so in the original, if you've seen the original Ghostbusters, she looks at Dan Aykroyd... In the original 1980s Ghostbusters, when they're like standing on type of like the Empire State Building and the the pyramid and the statues, just like the movie, are just on top of Empire State Building, and they're at the very top, and they're like they have their guns pointed at her, and the first thing she says is, "Are you a god?" And then Dan, Dan Aykroyd is like, "No," and then she uses her fingers like like Star Wars with the like like what is it called when Darth Sidious does it? Palpatine. Oh like the the force lightning. Yeah. She in the original nineteen eighties Ghostbusters, she does that with lightning and tries to throw them off the Empire State Building. Oh yeah. And then they grab on like last second and hold on and they end up like not falling off the Empire State Building. <laughs> and then the black guy goes, If somebody asks you if you are a god you say yes! Uh, <laughs> and that's what made that so hilarious. Uh, and then in this movie, she it does the... to you be a god. <laughs> and in this no. movie, she says the same exact line. And she says, are you a god? And then and he just like waits for a yeah. long time. No, 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 no. The best part is, like Bill Murray first goes, I think she remembers us. And, then, and they're like, yeah. And she smiles and she goes, are you a god? Uh, and Bill Murray and the black guy just look at Dan Aykroyd, and Dan Aykroyd's just like staring at her. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> uh, we're all gods. <laughs> we're all gods, yeah. Yep. And then, um, but you know, that was great, but then they 
brought back, you know, Sprangler in a CGI form, and it was just so beautiful and so. I mean, like that ending, man. When did he pass away? In the two thousand fourteen, I think. Oh, okay. That's the character that she's playing, but it's also the original director's son who's directing this movie and wrote wow. this movie. Okay. So the original director of Ghostbusters died, as did Sprangler's character, um, actor. And his son is directing this movie, and he's kind of doing it for his dad and doing it for the original Ghostbusters. It's very emotional. Like, it wow. is... It is ridiculous. Like it's that's, if you're gonna amazing. if you're gonna reboot or if you're gonna use the nostalgia thing to like the perfect degree, this movie did it in spades. Like this is the best way to like give respect to an old movie, mm -hmm. the director with having a son direct it, and then also kind of bringing back because like because originally Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and all of them actually said no because they're like the original director died. And the actor from the original died. So they didn't want to... They were like, no, we can't do that. Like, there's, he's dead. And yeah. we're, not, we're not coming back. So that's why they ended up doing the female reboot version. Yeah. Because they just didn't well, want to do it. They said no. one of them in the original? I think one of them was... No, all, all three of, of them, they had cameo. Bill and Barry was... They all had cameos, cameos in the yeah. female one? Yeah, but, yeah. They, but they weren't back as backpack, like, doing right. like this. With yeah. the, you know. But in this movie, like, they immediately said yes because it was the director's son... And they were doing such a homage to the one Ghostbuster that had died. They were like, this this is... Nobody expected this script to be this good. <laughs> so they were like immediately like, yes, sign, tell us where to sign. We're doing this movie like right now. And it worked in spades. I think I think it's a beautiful movie. It's a great throwback. Um, well, guys, we've talked a lot. There's, a lot. there's probably more to talk about and more things that we didn't pick up on. But thank you, Shannon, for your review. George, good job as well. And... Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think of Ghostbusters. If you've seen it, have you seen the original? Is this your first movie? Did you like it? Tell us your thoughts. Leave a comment below. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. So, Rob Stark and Jon Snow are in a love triangle with Cersei. <laughs> yes. Uh, Icarus and Camille and Johnny got like the best workout for the best body and they never took off the shirt i am disappointed and i'm not even gay but i am disappointed <laughs> <laughs> i'm even more disappointed because i mean what am i supposed to do during this movie <laughs> hope that chris pratt shows up with the raccoon I and wish. a tree Welcome to Geekdom Movies. We just walked out of Eternals and we're excited to talk about it. I'm Shannon, this is Fahad, and last but not least, this is George Bogdan. What'd you guys think of this movie? Well, I'll go first. Yeah. I'm gonna give you guys a little a little tidbit, a little rundown. So if you've been watching this channel, you know that I am not heavily invested into the Marvel Universe unless it's Spider-Man, because come on, Tom Holland. Or Guardians of the Galaxy, because come on, Chris Pratt. But I was very lost, very confused. Um, the movie has a lot of good visual effects. It has a lot of interesting things to look at. It has some interesting character ideas. There is one character in this movie who just, every time he is on screen, the movie comes to life. What's the Pakistani guy's name? Camille and Johnny. Camille and Johnny. Stole he every scene. Stole yes. every, every scene. scene he was in. Yes. Literally, I, if this movie had just been his scenes, I would have loved this movie. Shannon's making a new <sighs> Marvel script with uh, Aquafina from Shang Chi. Yes, and <laughs> Camille and Johnny. Oh my gosh, with this. that would and be then, amazing! And then um, Scarlet Black Widow's uh, dad, the Russian it's gonna Captain be Florence America. Q, Chris Pratt, Scarlett Johansson, Camille and Johnny, and Rocket Raccoon. That's oh. my perfect Marvel movie right there. That's and all. thus starts the Shannon Marvel Cinematic maybe a little, Universe. Uh, maybe, a little, <laughs> maybe a little Star Wars. A, a little Spider-Man. A little Spider-Man. Yeah. You can throw some Tom Holland in there for good measure, but that would be I've, a perfect movie. I've, I feel like you come for the side characters. I, I kind of do. I, yeah, I think I feel I'm here it. for the comedic relief. Yeah, you're like, all right, who's funny and who can I focus yes. on? Forget all the superhero well, muscles. That's what made that's what made Guardians so good is the whole movie is led by the comic relief character. Yeah, yeah. that's no, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Guardians is just 
silly characters. Like Suicide Squad. They're just silly. It's like seven mm -hmm. comic relief characters. Yeah, awesome. within their movie, which is not very normal. Anyways, I'm here to go first. I had the great pleasure of seeing this movie twice, but I wanted to experience it with George and Shannon, so I decided not to tell them that I'd seen it before. You I could seen tell. It. You'd yeah. already seen it. I turned out to You were reacting experience. before things were happening. So <laughs> I, I knew. I did not know that. That's wow. true. You did do that. Well, uh, my um, <laughs> my wife and my good friend, and he was like, we got to go see it. There's a Pakistani guy in here. And my friend, um, he's uh, LGBTQ. And he was like, first gay superhero, first Pakistani. Figure out if Sprite was a boy or a girl that entire movie. That was on purpose. Oh. She doesn't have a gender in the comic. She's just kind and of like. that was kind of why she was upset. And that's why she was upset. She wanted yeah. an identity. She wanted to be okay. normal. And okay, why she... I thought that I was just really dumb. No, 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 no. Yeah, like, I mean, my friend was really happy last night. He got to see a first. I mean, it is kind of a big deal. If you want representation, I mean, I've never gotten a Pakistani superhero in a Marvel movie. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really happy that's about that. That's true. Uh, and he never got to see a superhero that was, uh, you know, um, gay. Is gay was allowed? It, What's the Captain right Marvel? word? Is it is it okay to say gay or am I saying something I wrong? I think so. Yeah, fine, he was gay. That's okay. Yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wasn't he... Captain Marvel lesbian? No. No. <laughs> no. Okay. I don't know. It sure felt like it. I, yeah. Right. I think. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. But I mean, she's not supposed. They haven't said she's gay. Like in this movie, they made it very clear. No, he is gay. Let's talk about some things. I saw the critic reviews pouring in, and I was very disheartened because. You know, you guys know, I've been talking about Dune Internal since the beginning of January. Oh, yeah, you really have. Yeah. And these have been two of my biggest movies. Um, Shang-Chi was a great surprise. Black Widow was, eh, it was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Quiet Place 2 was Shannon's thing. Um, yeah, that was great. You know, but for me, like, Dune and Eternals ha were the ones, and they're like two weeks apart, uh, which is even crazier. So I was like, oh, man, can one of these actually disappoint? So when the reviews started pouring in that they're not good, my heart really kind of, like, like I felt like air just went right out of my body. I'm like, come on. Like, this is this movie sounds great. How could they have messed this up? Guys, don't listen to the critics. This movie is, it has its problems. I'm not, I'm not going to rave it. And it's not better than Shang Chi, but it's fantastic. So don't listen to us because we're critics. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not like New York Times, Newsweek, Washington Post. I agree you know. with you. I don't understand. We're not into why... the boring movies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I'm, I'm into the boring movies, but I don't understand why the critics hated this so much. So let me let me let me start with my review. Okay. All right. So I saw the reviews, and they said there's a lot going on in this movie. One, I. I, there's there no, is. there, you, there's no way around it. They're literally doing. In the beginning, there was Arsham, the god of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he <laughs> sent beings called Eternals and Deviants. This is the thing. People said the action sucks. It's not funny. What are you guys smoking? I have no idea. This movie is freaking hilarious. Um, the mm -hmm. action. Oh my god. The last thirty minutes was. Whew. There's a lot of action. Yeah, yeah, like, and not bad action. Like, actually, okay, here's one of my biggest critiques of Marvel. Sometimes they, they just throw things on screen just for it to be a Marvel movie. Like, big action sequences with no real drive just to make it big. Like, yeah. they don't feel... I got a lot of that during um, Black Shame. Widow. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. That was Especially, almost entirely. Like, you literally put a base in the air just for the sake that she had to fall out of the sky while bringing this yes. spaceship down. It didn't feel like there was any reason for it. But, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Marvel does action well. And, you know, when you're watching, you're like, forgive this. You're putting it, you know, it is a Marvel movie. But a lot of the times, besides Infinity War, Endgame, and, like, you know, Avengers movies, I feel like there's a point to the action. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's just a lot of the Marvel movies, there's just not. It's just throw money at the screen and hope people like it, right? Oh, that's what people are going for. They're going for the action. Right. And so it's it's understandable why they do it. But this is the first movie I can say that the action actually makes 100% complete sense in where that story is going and what they're trying to accomplish and how it relates to the characters. And for a... For having like six, seven Eternals in this movie, with all their distinction, they're all very unique. But you knew exactly what each of their motivation is in this movie, mm -hmm. which is absolutely like, wow, I can't believe you accomplished that. Um, and, and the other thing is, I love the cinematography in this movie. I think Chloe Zhao, who did um, Nomadland, her camera work oh, is another... Did. 
She did Nomadland, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And she's known for visual effects, and you get those... I mean, there's so many shots, like, of Babylon, the that beach. Cool. Um, there's just... The shots are just... They f- like, desert, um, like, India, and Iraq, and they, Set Alaska. Set in a Bollywood movie. Set in a Bollywood movie. <laughs> that was great. <Okay>. Cool. <laughs> Can I just say, N- Camille and Johnny's uh, little... Like, um, little camera guy. Oh, my God. I oh, want him in every yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. He How many great. cameras do you have? <laughs> you always bring a backup, sir. <laughs> so, you know, this movie has a lot of things going for it that a lot of people don't want to see. Which is, give me action, give me superheroes, give me funny lines, and give me explosions. This movie starts out with the beginning of the human race and how they came to be and how the entire universe was created. And it's it's not it's not spoiler, trust me. There's more spoilers. This is just, literally, there was mm-hmm. an alien-like god called a celestial that we got to see a little bit. If you go back and watch Guardians in the Galaxy, um, they do reference celestials who first were the in the beginning created mm. the Infinity Stones. They created the universe. They created aliens. And, um... And, and and so that's that's kind of like always been hinted at but this movie what it does really well is sets up the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe from the beginning of time and how they came to be all the way up to the human race and how they came to be and how it relates to these Eternals and Deviants and there's a really cool thing like in the Bible it talks about like you know there's humans and then there's like the fallen right like the fallen angels there's a little bit going on in this movie where there's these so-called protectors, these like angelic being, beings, like like Eternals, and then there's these other things that are kind of messed up, like these deviants. They look like monsters. They look kind of demonic, I guess, but not really demonic. They just look like monsters. Uh, of course, you have Thanos, who is half deviant, half eternal, and he's related to Angelina Jolie's character, um, which. They don't actually reference all the way until the end of the movie for some odd reason. Um, and and he he kind of knows everything. And he's been kind of... The thing this movie really sets up is Thanos' real motivation for what he did and why he did it with the snap that I won't go into here. And But it's done in a way... It's very, it's very artistic and it's done in a way that actually explains so many other motivations from other movies and what was going on in the background that we just didn't pick up. And I love that. Um, the other thing that I loved about this movie is, you know, I, it's it doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel repetitive. I don't know if that's the right word. It feels like wherever they're going in mm-hmm. this movie, mm-hmm. it's a new area, a new place that has something to do with the storyline in itself. I agree with that. And I love that it takes place 7,000 years. You have these people who have been living on this planet continuously over time and some of them get really bored and some of them get really tired. Some of them have their own motivations to seek life and do other things and all of it somehow relates to the core of this film and it's it was mind blowing. This is the exactly the type of movie I wanted to see when I heard they were making internals. So for me personally, I think they just they they were. I mean, this movie has spades. It's so dense. It's full of so much going on in this movie that I can't even talk about. You'll but probably end up watching it two or three times if you like it. Just oh, I'm get all of it. Yeah, like I'm definitely re- rewatching this movie for sure for a third time. Yeah. Yes, and so <laughs> for me, like I I love it. It's so. It's so the world is so big, not just the world, but this whole entire universe and the setup is so big, and I'm really excited. And there's more I can say, but I, you know that stuff comes in the spoilers. Is yes, George? I was just bummed out that um, it wasn't actually the guy from Doctor Strange in it. Oh. It, that it was actually an Eternal instead. I was, <laughs> they do look alike. I, had, I they look they look rather similar, and mm-hmm. I got confused about that. It yeah, no, me, they, it made they, me sad. Yeah, um, but you know, he he was good here too. This guy. Oh yeah, yeah, he was good. I'm I'm not denying that. I was just you know I was saw expecting the, the other yeah. guy, so I, I, yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this this movie is very good. Um, I'd have to say it had some signature Chloe Zhao shots, which I'm not sure how I feel about that hmm. because it was a lot of camera changes, not camera angle changes, which I'm not. A huge fan of but that was only really in the beginning of the movie as it progressed it, it it flowed a lot better and like you didn't seem to notice that it didn't stick out as much 
Um, I would have to say, oh my goodness, like, wow. As you said, <laughs> come on, Johnny. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. my goodness! Steals every, did amazing. Every scene. He did absolutely amazing. Like uh -huh. it was so, it we was need so a good. We Bollywood movie starring. We him. we do, and that was that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Um, Angelina Jolie absolutely killed it. Hmm. Um, Salma Hayek, man. Yeah, she she, had... she did she did a pretty good job too. Yeah. Um, it's weird to come from my wife's bodyguard to see it's, Salma Hayek. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was her? Yeah. yeah. I knew she so, looked familiar. Something that they did a phenomenal job of here, and this this really isn't spoilers because, you know, it's it's all part of it and you know this going in, is the way they set up, like, through different time periods and how it flowed. Mm -hmm. It It made it feel like it was kind of a blur which was really cool because you know that's how oh. it would feel to them if they were reading and it was it. just yeah. it was just kind of like you know they were it was just like a flow like yeah. you didn't it wasn't like it wasn't like a really like set thing like oh this was definitely from this time this was definitely from that time it was like it kind of like flowed and you could just sort of like feel the flow of it mm -hmm. which was really cool and i always imagine that's kind of what it would feel like you know as you accumulate more memories mm. they're just kind of like your, your past memories start getting foggy and, and you misremember things yeah you're it's right just kind of like a flow of time you yeah know? yeah yeah oh wow that's it a was good point. it was that was done absolutely amazingly i've never seen that in a movie where it's just uh, well I, I guess i have seen it in some movies but not i was not expecting that in a marvel movie right. that was amazing um no i i agree with you also I would just like to say they, like, I, um, I'm trying to remember who who the character is. But basically, the one, the the really smart one, um, um the was, black guy. Yeah, what was his name? I can't remember his name. But they, he, he did an absolutely amazing job of portraying that character. Like that was phenomenal. How do you step in and give education and science and tools, technology? I guess. But also at the same time, they could use that to. I yeah. liked I liked him and the kid. Um, he looks like a kid, but he's not. He was the one who lived in the Amazon, and the things that he was saying were so profound to me. Yes, it's the like, one who could like we could yeah you know. just it was it was just phenomenal, mm -hmm. just phenomenal what what they were, how they how they portrayed all of this. The story is really the most amazing part to me. But I mean, did, the yeah. shots were so good too, but. Yeah, it was it was phenomenal. Now I I do have to say some of the things that ended up, um, like showing later in the movie, they were kind of given away at the start, and I, I I Is didn't really oh, okay. I didn't really like that they sort of like gave him away like that, but hmm. um we'll go into that about. in spoilers. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Um. But yeah, this movie is definitely a really good movie. It's not your typical Marvel action movie. There's action. There's there's a lot more story to it and just like it's almost We're it's going closer to dive. a it's closer to a slice of life kind of. A little bit, but thing. it's also like mythology. We're going deep dive yes. into like places that I didn't think Marvel would ever have the balls to like commit to. Absolutely. That's, that's really the most profound thing about this movie is that they're taking a chance to make something so unique and different and talk about things that they would you would never think about their philosophical I mean, idea them, but yeah, I mean, but they, what I, yeah. They, would, you would never Thanos. nobody would normally portray that in a movie and yeah. actually like put that out there as an idea because yeah. it's so it's so like shunned as an idea right so to it was across seven thousand years no, no, not just, just that. that but... No, like just some of the idea of like some of the origins. Yeah, like it was it was really interesting race. thinking about that and how you know? the Marvel Cinematic Universe was created. And it, it was it, it, sparks, it was phenomenal. Yeah, like because even in like the first scene you see is just like that in the beginning, like the Bible, there was God, and it's like in the beginning there was Arkham, the Celestial, yeah. who created the universe, and these beings, so called gods, created planets and they're basically i mean it's 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 i'm like what what are we even watching i know yeah. it's like a whole new universe 
it, it, it does to be feel like of it. The MCU. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's it's amazing that you know. I mean, I, I'm not sure how I feel about like the fact that they just like came out and just it literally almost felt like Star Wars, like reading like that. <laughs> I like that, that though. It was it was interesting. I I thought it was I thought it was a good way of explaining it. Yeah, you know. Um, I just I was shocked they wouldn't choose uh, like a narrated version instead. I think they were maybe just trying to get the audience to go be like, "Hey guys, this is gonna be something very unique and interesting." That, it did portray that and much different from regular Marvel. Yeah, Thor's not coming yeah. making jokes, and there's I mean there are jokes, but this movie is very artistic. And very unique looking. It doesn't feel like any other Marvel movie that has come before. That's, that's very true. In all of the Marvel movies, they always started off with giving you a few hints towards the story. And then like you're like, oh, okay, so that's kind of what's going on. Here, they literally put it in text and then start showing you the story. Right. Which is really interesting because like, yeah, they've never they've never done that before. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, hey, I have a question. So, uh, there's a scene at the very beginning where Sprite changes her... Is this spoilers? Outfit. Should we wait? No, it's at the very beginning. And there's a scene where Sprite, like, change. Well, okay, yeah, it is spoilers. <laughs> well, let's actually, let's go into that. So, I'm, um, I'm gonna go, uh, I'll, I'll have George go next, uh, but, um, I say, I, I highly recommend this. If you're, if you're a Marvel fan, I think you, and, and the audience score is such a night and day difference. Yeah. These critics do not care about this, so they're already, like, making this movie rotten. Because I they're think, not... I think one of the reasons why is because of some of the Chloe Zhao shots, like, towards well, the beginning. Well, they love that crap. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think they that's did. That's what they loved about No Land. I don't think they did because that's a different it's a completely different format for the no no I, I, I read so a, the fact that she yeah. actually brought some of that into this felt really strange okay. and I'll go into that in spoilers no I, I okay so I did read a lot of the critics and they were saying like I don't care about this story I don't care what happened in the past why is this interesting why should I care that's what the critics are saying but you see the audience score and it's like it's like 90% there's it's it reminds me of The Last Jedi the critics loved Star Wars The Last Jedi but the audience score was like 20-30% yeah. and it was like a night and day difference now we're switching the critics don't like this movie but the audiences are responding really well it's already on its way to make it's already on its way to make more money than Shang-Chi and Black Widow right now so that's a really good sign of like what's to come I mean I, I think Kevin Feige was really smart to be like, I think our audience is ready to like go somewhere deeper with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Absolutely. He felt that heartbeat and completely took it. I don't think this movie could have made five years ago. It really is a movie that yeah, only no. could have been made after Avengers Endgame. I agree. Yep. To to really answer these really deep philosophical like deep historical philosophical questions that they're kind of like unwrapping for us. Loki also is kind of doing that in a very different way but Loki did that really well. WandaVision's kind of doing that right now too. Um, I, I'm I'm just I, I think I think the audience wants wants to grow and mature in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've seen the capes and the superheroes and the Avengers and the dance and I think we're ready for something different. We don't want another Avengers movie. We kind of want the same exact universe that they have set up, but maybe take it in a very different direction, but still make it entertaining and good. And I think them doing that, really changing that, like Shang-Chi did it. Like, Shang-Chi was like, what am I even watching right now? And yeah, it's still Shang-Chi's a superhero movie, but the places they went and the things that they did in the last half of Shang-Chi is nothing like anything I've ever seen in the Marvel Cinematic that came before. And and, and so I'm just I, I think you guys will be really pleased. Forget the critics. It's not made for them. It's made for us. Us who are fans of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Us who have grown up watching Thor and Captain America and Iron Man and all these movies. Who've watched Thanos. Like, I think it's made for you. George. Final I agree. thoughts. Oh, I agree. okay. Um, I, I would have to say this movie is really amazing. I think even if you're not a Marvel fan, you might be interested in this. Uh, it might, like, it might, like, pique your interest in regards to, like, the origins of the the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because they're not they're not at all what appeared in the previous movies, like in regards to what it what you might have thought from those movies, what it, the origins were. So I would have to say go see this in Dolby if possible, because you know I love Dolby. Um, <laughs> we got to see it in Dolby, 
and it was fantastic. Um, yeah, I you know I got to see it in IMAX last night. Of course. And um, the big blow up scenes with the IMAX cameras that they used with the visuals, it looked great. But in Dolby, the sound effects is good. You, it depends what you're into. I'm I like always both. into sound. Yeah, I'm so always into sound. So if oh. you if you like beautiful cinematography and image, for me, Dune had to be seen in IMAX. I couldn't see it any other way. Mm-hmm. Eternals, I'm glad I signed IMAX, and it was fun to watch it in Dolby today just to see the difference. Um, but yeah, you're right. Like it 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 sounded great. It even looked great. Honestly, it Dolby looks great. great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it still looked beautiful. I think for me personally, if I see the name Marvel, I'm not not Sony Marvel like Venom. I'm just saying like the Disney Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna be excited to see it because yeah. they haven't let us down. They understand their audience. They understand what kind of stories they want to tell, and and they know what audiences like. And I I can firmly say the critics are completely wrong on this. We're we're gonna go into spoilers now because there's so much to dig into. So to sum it up, I would say watch this in theaters. Oh, you didn't say that yet. My bad. I thought you you cut me off. (laughs) (laughs) Shannon, your thoughts? Yeah, if you like Marvel, you're gonna like this movie. Uh, The critics are wrong on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't understand why they didn't like this movie. It wasn't my thing, but I think it's going to be your thing. If you're into movies and you're into Marvel, definitely go see it on the biggest screen you can find. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go into spoiler part. So please come back later. Go go watch this movie. It's totally worth your time. Please don't watch this review or this spoiler review until you've seen it. Um, we're going to go a little bit of deep dive. I have a lot of questions. That I have a lot of questions. <laughs> All right, Shannon. How about you? Th- okay. So at the beginning of this movie, Sprite. Mm-hmm turns herself into an adult woman to flirt with Icarus or some guy at the bar. Some guy at the bar. Some guy at the bar, yeah. Why didn't she just do that again and then date him? Because that wasn't her physically. Yeah, when he tried to touch her hand, it went right through her. It went right through it, and she's like, you've had too many drinks, and then walks off because she was Uh, disappointed that he couldn't actually touch her like that. Oh, so she was trying it. Yes. Now, why couldn't she be with him in her form that she was in? Because she looks like a little girl. That, I mean, so that wasn't what? the only problem, too, but old. yeah, but the, if it's the good other thing for Bella in Twilight, it's good enough for Sprite. <laughs> I don't think the audience wants to see a little girl getting hit on and no. taken advantage of by adult men, even if she is 7,000 years old. It makes sense gotta, from an audience yeah. perspective. Yeah. It does not make sense from a 7,000 year old's perspective. Of course. No, I agree with you. Yeah. But again, that's us knowing One of her, not the uh, not the people in the world. The other thing, her. too, is... a different reason that she couldn't be with him. Because I think if they're both 7,000 years old, they would have gotten past that a long time ago. But he didn't like her. He, he didn't like, like her. Cel- okay. That was... That was... That was the reason was okay. because like you, she wanted to basically be able to live a life gotcha okay. on earth and she did like him yeah he however liked Cersei so okay also wasn't he a murderer why did he murder that lady so, that was brought up in it so what what basically happens is Arsham the god of the one who sends them to earth 7,000 years ago Okay. Or whatever it was. When they came to Earth, the only person that knew exactly what the actual mission was, was Salma Hayek's character, Ajak. Ajak knew that they were basically farming... Like, you know how you farm pigs or sheep or cows for the slaughter? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's basically... They were trying to grow the population, not for the purpose of doing something good, but to grow the population so another celestial god can be born. And their reason to do this is to say, hey... We need more celestials so the in- universe can expand and grow and there could be more alien planets and more people living. Okay. Um, and that's the dilemma of the movie because Ajax, of course, totally bought into that. She trusted uh, the uh, Icarus. Icarus. Icarus, yeah. The one who mm-hmm. flew too close to the sun from the Greek mythology. Icarus was the only other person she ever told. Now... The thing is, Icarus was hiding this big secret for a long time. You learned that the reason he left Cersei a lot, like thousands of years ago when they were in love and doing good, she Ajax wanted Sir, uh, Icarus to take over as the leader of the Eternals and continue the mission. That's just so she gave everything to Icarus. The problem is, Icarus couldn't oh. handle that information really well. I've seen this twice, that's why I know. Um, that's kind of the reason. 
I don't think so. No, no, no. He he says it is the guy had to go, and then when he tells he tells her he why had to do- go because otherwise he was going to tell her exactly. It was not. It was not because of the fact that he was being like. I'm saying set was, up as the next leader. There no, wasn't. No, no. There wasn't supposed to be him as the next leader. That wasn't it at all. That's what you just said. Well, when I did the research after last night and I looked it up, everyone made it pretty clear because I was confused too. And they said the reason Ajax, like nobody wanted Cersei to be the leader. Cersei was kind of given this thing only because when Ajax died, she hauled that ball, whatever it is that was in her neck that can talk to Arsham the God. Um, Mm -hmm. She was going to give it to him if anything happens to her but she changed her mind because she realized like well yeah yeah that's that makes sense right but what i'm what i'm saying is is that it wasn't the reason he left cersei was not because ajax was trying to set him up as the next leader that had nothing to do with it the reason he left cersei was because otherwise he knew he would tell cersei what the real mission objective was no sprite and uh sprite says this to him and i watched it twice the second time she says like you're meant to be the leader. Why are you cowering away and acting like you're not? Everybody knows Ajax picked you as the next leader. He, she, Sprite made it very clear the person that's supposed to lead the Well, Eternals, yeah, but that wasn't why he left Cersei. He We're left, going in a circle. No, here. no, okay. So listen. Cersei, he, you're right. Icarus did not want to tell Cersei, and that information was too heavy for Icarus to handle. Yes, he did go away, but it, there is a significant thing that did happen whatever it was, hundreds, thousands, whatever time frame, that Ajax did tell Icarus, I'm giving you all this information if anything happens to me. Yeah, and that happened right before they left Babylon, or right when they left Babylon. Right. So, So eventually I do think that he got... He couldn't be with Cersei because he couldn't lie to her, like you said. Exactly. We're, yes. Yeah. We agree on that. Uh, I was just we saying, were just getting confused. Yeah. Trying yeah. to tell each other. But yeah. Okay. Um. So so when he does come back and then like suddenly Salma Hayek is coming up on a horse in South Dakota and was like, "Hey, yeah, no, we're not gonna go with Arsham's plan here. Arsham can suck it." basically <laughs> we're not gonna destroy all the humans just so a celestial can be born Icarus is like are you freaking kidding me we worship Arsham Arsham is the way Arsham is God who cares if a bunch of billions of people die we worship Arsham <laughs> like mm-hmm. that is why we're here so he kills her he basically uses he usually betrays her and kills her because he does not agree but mm. Okay. Um, after that, he's lying to all the Eternals. He's just basically distracting them so that an, a, a Celestial can be born. He's not actually there to be like, oh, we need to get the gang back together and that fight was... deviants. Okay, so I hate to say it, but that was exactly the point I knew he killed her. Yeah. Was when they were at the ranch. Right. And like, as soon as they walked up and he's like, it was the deviants. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I mean, it could it have was, been the deviants. No, it was so obvious right at that point in time that he killed her. And I'm just like, wow. Well, they really gave that away right now. I mean, there was something but, fishy about him. There's no way denying it. Like, something was just off the whole time. I, I do think... I mean, again, Cersei does say, I agree with Ajax's plan of changing our minds. You can't... Like, you know, Angelina Jolie says, when you love something, you protect it. And that's kind of what has happened over thousands of years. These Eternals have continued to grow and live and be part of these people and the see only... civilizations. And they all love humans in their own way. One person wanted to bring technology. The other one was like, maybe I should be a god. Like that guy who was basically like, I'm going to take these people to the Amazon. And it looked very like cultish. But really, but that one, you know. That, no, that was just a straight up cult. That was that was what that was. <laughs> no, I, yeah, but he, it wasn't, he 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 wasn't evil. He was no, just trying to protect trying humans to, in his own way. Yes, by presenting himself as a god instead of hiding. I guess. Yeah. Um, and all of them had very deep philosophical ideas on what it means. Ajax, Salma Hayek's character, was like, "We love them and we protect them from deviants, but we don't interfere and help them grow. Yeah. We don't 
prevent sickness. We don't prevent death, even though they totally could. Um, but they felt like it was wrong. I mean, they'll they'll protect them from the deviants, but they'll because you know John Snow. <laughs> I keep calling him John Snow. Yeah. That meeting is great. It was John in it, and that was I know that was amazing. That f- opening scene where John and Rob are like, "Hi, I'm Dave. I'm Dan, or whatever," and mm-hmm. I just could not stop laughing because it was like so on the nose, like they're doing this on purpose. Yeah. They're like, "Oh yeah, like we watch Game of Thrones. We're gonna have them fall in love with." Cersei. <laughs> that was okay. That was just brutal to everybody. Oh my goodness! And I was just gonna was say, so like, funny. Rob Stark j- once again has been beaten by Jon Snow, <laughs> and he has won the prize. That's actually hilarious. Because yeah, because yeah, in Game of Thrones, Jon Snow does become kind of the king of the North. Yeah, <laughs> and then Rob Stark loses everything. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's. That's it's, a red wedding. Yeah, instead here, it wasn't a red wedding. It was just... A red was... dude. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> he is a red dude. Um, anyways, I think the question Celestial really... Being the, sorts. Yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, like, the question they ask is, do we stop the emergence? Because if we stop the emergence, thousands of planets can't be born because only celestials can create life and grow the universe. Mm-hmm. Is it... Are Here's, humans worth it? Are that humans worth question. saving and preventing a celestial to be born? And even within the Eternals, they were like kind of not sure themselves. I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is a good idea. Like, I get that like Earth is here and look how beautiful it is. It has its own culture and people. But if we stop this celestial Tyron or Tyron or whatever he's called um, to from being born... Then other civilizations and other planets like Earth don't get a chance to be born. That's a very deep philosophical question that I, I was like, I I was just not prepared for that. Because yeah. I can see both sides. One can say, no, you never commit genocide. You never kill millions of people or billions of people. It's never the right answer. It's always wrong. And the other half's like, well, maybe... If Earth dies, then a thousand planets can be born and more life can thrive throughout the universe, and that's a good thing, too. You you do realize, though, that Ajax's only reason for doing that was basically the Avengers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to go there later, but I just uh. really <laughs> wanted to talk about that deep question that they were really, like, like having... They didn't know how to answer it. Because, yeah. you know, Camille and Johnny's like... I'm not going to fight you, and I'm not going to go with him, but I don't know if I'm ready to, like, throw away the celestial plan out the window either. I don't mm-hmm. know where I really personally stand, um, though I do wish Camille and Johnny did show up in the last battle. That's the only thing that irks me the most. He was just like, I'm out. Good luck. You can't beat Icarus, but if you do... But I, I think, like, um, Camille and Johnny's character did respect Icarus. He said it. He's like, I'll follow you yeah. to the end of the line. Like, I will follow you to battle. I'll that, follow you to death. And that's what and... triggered Icarus. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's like, you don't know me. You don't know who I am. And he just kind of like runs away. But there is a thing like where Sprite and um, Camille and Johnny and Cersei see, see like Icarus as the true leader. Not, not Cersei. But she is the right leader for what the movie needed to accomplish. And, and that's that's interesting. And the other thing is, yeah, like we were talking about it before. Thanos said to make the universe grow, we can stop the emergence. We can prevent. He did. Pro- I mean, Thanos is the good guy. He made I, it sound like it was all due to resources, though. He didn't need to. Exp- well, pff, yeah, because <laughs> for planets to grow. <laughs> well, no, he made it sound like basically, essentially, it was because of due to lack of resources on the planets themselves. He made it sound like he was he was like some person who needed to wipe out half of every single planet just to make it so that everyone else had enough resources to continue life. Well, he he knew that the more the people the more people there are in the universe, the more celestials will be born and each more planets will die because of it, right? So, when he said resources, what he really meant is celestials. But the problem was is that he essentially had a plan to just all of a sudden snap his fingers that was his solution. Half of, half of everybody would be wiped out, but then they would reach that point again. What right. was his plan he, for that? He was prolonging it. He thought that was the right thing to do. In his heart, that's what he felt was wow. 
um, was the most important thing in the world. The most important thing, that was his conclusion, right? So hmm. these celestials are going to be born, and he sat there for thousands of years thinking about that question just like the Eternals have. Well, no, Eternals just got learned of it today. So they're kind of like present day learning this. But uh, like, but Thanos had known this for a long, long, long time, like Ajax, right? And other Eternals who are like Ajax, they knew the ultimate plan. And Angelina Jolie did. She's been alive even for millions of more years than Ajax and when the Deviant takes over Angelina Jolie's he kind of like erases her dementia which is great because he's just sucking up it's like you know when your computer slows down because you're using too much data and your computer just starts crashing he's mm. like oh let me wipe this memory out and clean you up a bit and like he just kind of like cleaned the computer data in Angelina Jolie and he's like I get what you're saying you've watched planets rise and fall for these celestials you, and, and the Deviant, when he starts talking and he kind of grows, he's like, you're never the heroes. You guard not the good guys. You guys are evil. You have mm -hmm. let places like my planet and all these other planets die. You guys are murderers. And then, you know, he hurries off. It's basically him kind of saying, you guys are the problems. And, like, I... I, I mean, I, at the same <laughs> time, he was the problem, too. Right, because he wants to... He wants to take over all the planets. Yeah, so it's so weird. So it's like, it was like, well, you're not a solution either. But that's what, but that's what I like. <laughs> that's though. what was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, because like you're like nobody. There's no white and black answer here. There's only. It was almost what? like, <laughs> it was it was like as good as an anime story. Like I was thinking yeah, of Genshin. regards to it was like an anime story. In regards to like, there's not a clear like you know good and evil. Good and or, evil. Yeah. There's basically like you have. You have conflicting reasons for doing different things, and it's not necessarily that one is completely bad. Yeah, you know? and 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 the thing mm -hmm. that I liked one one thing my friend said was like Thanos never explains it to the Avengers, and he never explains it to humans or any of these because he feels himself he is a god. And why do you? Why would you want to come down and explain your answers? to an ant as to why right. you're building the driveway and yeah, right. mm -hmm. pushing their ant hill out of the way. You sure. know, because he wouldn't. Kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of shocked, though, that he didn't really say it to Gamora. That is one thing. Yeah, that's true. Because he told Gamora a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But he didn't But not everything. That. Yeah. yeah. Thanos, they, I mean, Thanos does have his reasons. I mean, and he doesn't need to explain it. Just like Ajax had her reasons and... Icarus has his reasons and Cersei and all the other Eternals have their reasons. They're all basically dealing with a big question that 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 doesn't really that doesn't really affect the Avengers. They talk about Odin which is absolutely it's like I did Camille and Johnny say Odin used to run around and he wanted to be me and he looked up to me and then he got to be all and mighty Odin the father and now he doesn't return my calls. That's a that hilarious, hilarious line. And now he pretends to be a god. Whatever. I, I don't need him anyway. That was so funny. Odin is um, Thor's father in the... Thor's father? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right. Okay. So Camille and Johnny, the Pakistani guy, was like, I knew Odin. He was like a little boy. Uh, he used to yeah. follow me around and think that I was, was god so and funny. cool. <laughs> and I was like, wow, like these guys really are kind of... And they're, and they're battling insecurities and they don't have anyone else to talk to about the things that they're dealing with except each other and I do think Sprite is right and I think when she says we sh and Camille and Johnny actually said like we should have never disbanded because then Ajax would be alive right now she wouldn't yeah. be dead and I and I and I feel like their family scrabble you know like they did have issues they did fight like the one what is the guy's name who lived in the Amazon what was his name um, it began with a D. Wasn't it? Druig. Druig. Oh. Druig. Druig. Yeah, yeah. Druig. And he was like, f like, I'm just going to take all these people. And they were like in Mexico, right? It was like the Mexican it, Yeah, it was, it was like the, the Mayans, Aztecs. Something, something like, like that. that. And he prevented them to start killing each other because oh, yeah. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm just going to take them. And I'm so sick of this. I'm so sick of being told by Arsham, the god, the celestial, I can't step in and prevent war basically mm -hmm. right. he thought that and he disagreed and Icarus and Ajax both the disagrees like the only way you're stopping me right now is if you're murdering me so are you ready for that and obviously they didn't want to kill him but they were like okay well he's made his decision and that's when Ajax says go go and be free go out into the world and 
do do find inspiration to live and be um you know and and there's just God, this movie is good. I really love this movie. I really do. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's so philosophical. It's, it's phenomenal. I mean, uh, I can't stop thinking about it. It's another Marvel movie where I think that if I understood what was happening, I might like it. <laughs> I, I think... I think I, so. I, I mm-hmm. think if you... I mean, again, you know, you said it best. When you watched Guardians of the Galaxy the first time, you didn't really like it. You watched it again, and you picked up so much stuff. Yeah. And every Marvel yeah. movie is, unfortunately... <laughs> made that way it's mm-hmm. especially they this are, one they are very yeah. rewatchable yeah and I and I think Marvel knows that it knows that these people are going to watch these movies four or five times so yeah. it's okay for us to kind of leave breadcrumbs and kind of make them watch it the first time and not pick up some certain things and watch it again mm-hmm. they're, they're, they know people like that stuff so they're of course going to do it um so I, I again like I was saying I, I can't wow like I the places this movie went um you know I'm still trying to understand it all i mean uh let's let's have a fun conversation a little bit not so much philosophical because we can go deep dive there harry styles <laughs> shows up what in the world as that was awesome Thanos's brother brother yeah, yeah. was a stepbrother no, it was no his brother. brother okay and oh my goodness that that is a mic drop of an epic scale uh, man, crazy, and he looks good. Like he, he looks, does look he good. does look really good. Dude. I know. <laughs> I was just like, man. this is very interesting. I don't know because what they're feeding those people over at Marvel, but man, they always make their men look great. It's the Marvel cinematic diet. And yeah. how to turn Chris <laughs> Somebody said like Oh wow Did you guys see Camille and Johnny He went from like Looking like a nerdy Skinny guy To like this yeah. buff dude And you're like It's the Chris Pratt effect Yeah Yeah They have it is. They have uh, They have Personal Figured out the formula To they like have, They probably live on like Water and ground beef And I don't know and, I just, Yeah It's probably like I think it's a lot more Complicated than protein, that Protein <laughs> Well it's probably like a, a very very High protein diet And drinking only water and then working yeah. out like seven days a week, three times a day. I'm sure they're on a pretty probably so. yeah. working out their entire life for like a year. Unless you're that Jackman, then it's three every decades. Calorie or Chris is Hemsworth. Counted, every calorie is two decades. Chris everything they put in their mouth is calculated. And, right. Yeah. That would be so amazing. I mean, you get paid millions of dollars to look like the hottest guy on the planet, basically. Yeah. That's basically not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all, but. Yeah. Again, I think the reason they get... They're really good actors. Like, when somebody said the guy from um, Chron- Chronicles of Narnia and, like, oh, the, the yeah. Meet the Millers, you saw that image, and I was, you were like, oh, my God, that like, guy. What? He looks what amazing. What the yeah, F? Yeah, he looks incredible. <laughs> I'm yeah. so excited because he's such a good actor. So he we'll had see a where serious glow-up. Oh, yeah. Glow-up <laughs> of the year. Yeah. Yes. Hubba hubba. Yeah. He's a great little actor, too. No, he is. Mm-hmm. I, I just remember him from Chronicles of Narnia. What was the third one? called the one with the cat, giant caterpillar uh prince caspian voyage of the dawn treader voyage of the dawn treader yeah. he was the he oh my into the god dragon. he stole that whole movie uh, no he was like so annoying That's the character used he to no annoying. i know i just wanted him to drown and that, die then he played that character well, uh, well and then he, he in did we're the such millers he's so funny in we're the millers he is so funny should i watch yes. to meet the millers would yeah, i like it yeah, yes you would love it it so is funny. so funny you might actually start to like um i forgot what that Jennifer Aniston? No, not Jennifer. I mean, you already like her. Uh, Zoe um, 101 girl? She's, was it, isn't she like the granddaughter of, uh, the one woman oh, from Sound Emma, of Music? Emma Thompson's, um, No, Emma, not, no, not she, Emma Thompson, Her name not, is Emma. Her, the actress's name is Emma. Emma something. Hmm. Yeah. But she's the pretty, in, Emma, pretty, pretty woman's not, niece. Not Emma Andrews. She's the niece of the pretty woman lady. No, no, she's not. Yeah, I haven't seen them. Well, maybe she either. is, but she's also... I thought she was Julie Andrews' uh, granddaughter. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, who's? Maybe. Emma Roberts, Look I think. Up. Oh, Emma Roberts! Emma Roberts, yeah, that's... I knew it was an Emma. She's... I've seen her in things, but not, like, anything big. Like, she's never she's really... She's really good in We're the Millers. Oh, really? Yeah. She was in Zoe 101, I think. Wasn't that her? Or was that Jamie Lynn no Spears? I so. Hmm. Number one question: Who's Harry Styles in Eternals? I gotta know. All right, this well, is a major spoiler. 
Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Oh my God! Just tell me. Da, 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 da. Watermelon sugar. No. <laughs> da, 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 da. Eternals. Da, 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 da. Harry is Eros. Oh yeah, Eros was his character. Yeah. I told you it was Eros. It was not Star Fox. I don't know where you got that idea. They did say Star Fox. They did say Star Fox. But they also no, they said Eros. Yes. No. He. he they, they said, said both. They said Star Fo- Fox, but they also well, he's, said Well, he's he's called Star Fox because he's the best um, fighter jet pilot in the universe. He, oh. When he flies his ship and he fights people, he's never been defeated. Let once. me guess. Star Fox, like from. I know, Star Fox Star stole Lord, it. Let me guess. It was Star Lord who gave him that because Star Lord used to play Star Fox. Oh. <laughs> Watch that be the the story behind that it. That would be cute. But 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 is he really in Super Smash Bros. Star Fox? Yes. So there's a Marvel Cinematic character in. Smash it's not Bros? supposed to be the same one, and that's why I'm so upset about this. Uh. <laughs> I don't like the fact that he's called Star Fox. This is wrong. Yep. On so okay. many levels. So the mid credit scene from Marvel's Eternals movie introduces the brother of Thanos, Eros, a.k.a. Star Fox, played by Harry Styles, along with the teleporting pal Pip the Troll, voiced by Patton Oswalt. Oh, of course it was Patton Oswalt. Yeah, so, yeah. Mar- <laughs> so Disney actually... Um, took the name of Star Fox directly from the Marvel comics actually <laughs> they did that on purpose um, and they actually made him a fox in the what? Nintendo thing yeah yeah because he's no. called Star Fox Captain Star Fox in the Marvel series he is the he's basically undefeatable if anybody to fly a ship and try to take him down they will always lose because he is that mm. damn good he's like the top gun maverick he's like the Tom Cruise of flying ships in space um, man I kind of want to watch something he's in then. <laughs> Make <laughs> no, some movies of him, please. I mean, I, honestly, like, that is the only casting I've seen where I, when he, they, they introduced Harry Styles as mm-hmm. Star Fox, Arrow's brother. I'm and like, I just lost it. I well, lost I, I, it. First of all, perfect casting. Because yes. that's, if you read, no, seriously, if you read the comics, there's this, there's this kid who basically outs the, like, basically the galaxy of, like, anyone and everybody like these they got these big macho men who like fly ships and they're monsters and they're big they look like hulk and they're like we'll take you down and then this kid gets into his ship and just completely devastates and like kills them and like destroys them and they can never win i mean perfect and he's also kind of kind of a playboy he's kind of uh he knows he's good looking and he knows he's getting checked out and he's not afraid to tell you. Yeah. And he's not afraid to tell um Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. He's, not, he's ready to tell you, hey listen, cousin. I'm hot. You're hot. God's want this to <laughs> <laughs> So Kit Harrington, Jon Snow, is the great, 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 great grandson of Arthur whose blade he wields. He's called the Black Knight in the comics. And the sword he uses is a sword that was made by Merlin. And the sword actually corrupts him um, and makes him, I guess, darker, like you were saying? Yeah. And so that's that's who he is and where that goes. I think that's going to tie to Ant-Man because in Ant-Man we know that Kong the Conqueror is going to be in it. Because Kong the Kong... Well, Kang the Conqueror was the bad guy at the end of the Loki series. Did you finish Loki? Yes, I did. So that guy but I didn't is King. Know how, how does that have anything to do with Ant Man? Oh, they just announced that he's going to be the main bad guy in Ant Man. Oh. So okay. if that's the case, I think they're probably going to have Jon Snow, Kid Harrington's character, in Ant Man to fight King the Conqueror. Because the only person that can defeat King the Conqueror in the comics is not Loki or Ant Man. It's actually Kid, uh No, no, Kid Harrington, Jon Snow, Knight. the oh, Black Knight. Oh, okay. So. That's where wow. I think that's my theory. Now they could do something very different. I prefer they do a like Kit Harrington deserves its own movie as the Black Knight because I think that'd be that really cool. That would be amazing, right? So I mean, they're definitely planning something. Marvel never does anything without a reason. They did so many nods to to like uh, to Game of Thrones that they just they need to do they need to have one of them take a major role and after well, Icarus I mean, ran into the sun um <laughs> did he okay so that's that's I don't think Icarus is dead I think he went into the sun to power it he did something but I don't believe he's dead cause I didn't see him fly into the sun I saw him float above the sun 
Like, you know, he was going myth- straight to it. In the myth, he flies too close to the sun, so the, ma- the wax on his wings melts. However, yes. however, Neil deGrasse, uh, Neil oh deGrasse Tyson was talking about how if you, sun- if you were flying closer to the sun, you would be getting higher in the atmosphere. You'd actually get colder. Like, Wait. if you go up into an airplane, you freeze. They have well, to heat the airplane. Yeah, but that's here on Earth. Yeah. Essentially. But the myth was on Earth. Well, yes. Yes. And that was, that was, yeah. Yeah. It could have been debunked <laughs> if they had known anything back then. They didn't I'm, know but I'm just saying there's a 50-50 chance here that Icarus isn't dead. I mean, I don't blame him if he killed himself. I don't see him die. I don't that's think, what I'm saying. Yeah. Here's the thing. I don't think he did it to kill himself. I think he was wanting to power the sun for some reason. Because here's... Power the sun? Or he was losing energy and he was trying to power himself up. Because they're robots, right? Technically. The so Eternals are... Be, because remember... But how, said that. How, how could he draw from the sun? And what would he turn into? Well, I, I don't know. But there is an Icarus Eternal storyline that has something to do with like Superman. Because you know Superman needs the red sun to power up. Icarus is basically... Like they actually say it. It's like you're like Superman. They're literally referencing yeah. Icarus... The DC Comics, which is crazy, Batman and Superman were referenced in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mind blowing. Oh yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. That's a whole other huh. rant that we could go on, but we're gonna ignore it. But like in the in the in the comics, he's like Superman who gets power from the sun. I don't think Icarus is dead. I think maybe he's either gonna be like Invincible, where he leaves the planet and then tries to come back and kills the family like Invisible did. Mm-hmm. So, or, final thoughts, guys. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> this is final <laughs> thought. Uh, Icarus could either be still evil and he he got defeated even though he helped. I guess he couldn't kill Cersei because he was in love with her. So he couldn't, he couldn't. It's like Invincible. He couldn't kill his son. Yeah. It's like, you know, I just pictured Icarus with the thing. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You have to watch Invincible to know what we're talking about. Anyways, it's so amazing. It, okay. it really is. It's... But I... <laughs> You, you, just, you just you have to watch it. It's so good. So I I think I think you and Rob would like it. I think this is what's gonna happen. Okay, last thought. I swear, I'm, there's just so much to talk about. When Ark Arksham the God shows up at the end, I think he didn't just take Cersei, Camille, and Johnny and the black guy because he was pissed and there will be judgment, like he said. I think he got Icarus also. I think he captured Icarus as well, and maybe. He's programming Icarus to fight them and bring, again, the the destruction of Earth. My theory, you could say I'm wrong. Hmm. Well, we don't know. He's going to base it. He said he's going to base it off of their thoughts. And for right now, he's going to spare Earth until he can review their data. But I'm saying he also captured Icarus. I'm saying he didn't die. Oh, I'm okay. saying, like, before he came to Earth to grab them, he grabbed Icarus, too. Because technically they're immortals, right? Maybe so, he kind of noticed that Icarus was doing something really weird. Well, the thing and, is, they uh, can't die. So if he did come, then that means Salma Hayek's character and the Salma one you Hayek talk- did die. No, their memories did not die. Their memories live on forever. Their memory their memories, box, yes, yes. But like their actual bodies can. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. I'm just saying that when he came, he probably grabbed the big Asian guy who looked like like Hulk just punches you really hard and things just mm-hmm. explode everywhere mm-hmm. I think he probably recovered their oh, okay. memories their brain to review and then these probably just my thoughts anyways we can talk more but this was a great movie yes and very there's philosophical a reason... <laughs> please see it yeah no sir well I mean it's already making more money than Shang-Chi on it's opening weekend and wow, Black Widow okay. so I don't think that's a worry I just, just I would just say don't listen to critics I think this movie is fantastic